to go to find Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. And we're into the Christmas season. <laughs> and today, today I want to preach a message entitled Prophecies. And I want to mention this before we look into the Word of God. If someone should come to you and say, Gil or Mark or Michael or Herod, well, why do you believe, Philip, that this Bible, you know, anybody should come to you and ask you a question. Why do you always say that the Bible is the Word of God? Why do you always say that? If you're a Christian and you're born again, <coughs> most of us, and you will hear me say that in every message, let's open the Word of God. Let's open the Word of God. Now, the Hindus would not say that. And the Muslims would not say that. But if you are Christians and you are born again, you will hear me say that, I don't know how many hundred times or million times, the Word of God. This is the Bible, the Word of God. Well, if someone should ask you now, why do you say that all the time? What about the other books? What about all the other books that are out there? What about the, the Gita, the Quran, and the Book of Mormon, and blah, 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 all the other books? Why do you keep saying that your Bible, this Bible that you have, is the Word of God? Well, there is one answer that you can give to them, and that, I think, is the most powerful answer, that the prophecies of this book is fulfilled. And that testifies to the fact that this is the Word of God. That is one of the most powerful testimony to the fact that this that you have is the Word of God. And what is that? Prophecies being fulfilled. Remember that. Prophecies being fulfilled. And when you are talking about Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ, you are looking at prophecies that was mentioned hundreds and hundreds of years ago being fulfilled to actually the crossing of a team in the birth of Jesus Christ. And that is why we can rejoice that what we are celebrating is prophecies being fulfilled. The miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ. Human science could not have explained this. This is historical and history and whatever. It is a miracle that you and I are so for, um, um, celebrating here. So understand that and see the prophecies today for what they are through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here we are in Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Look at what the Bible said here. And read it with me at the count of three. One, two, three. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now let's go back to the verse. Isaiah chapter 7, 7 and verse number 14. Therefore, look at that. The Lord, no one else, the Lord himself, the Lord himself, note that very carefully, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. What is a sign? Behold, a virgin, a virgin, a girl, a young girl who has never had any relationship with a boy. Now, medical science, that is beyond medical science. That, you, you tell people that and they say, you, you're speaking, no, that cannot happen. A virgin shall conceive, and the virgin shall bring forth not a girl child, but a son. A virgin shall conceive. This occurred, this occurred hundreds and hundreds of years before it ever took place. Today, in this short message, I hope to prove to you what is a prophecy. So that when you watch television, and you see all that is happening in the world today on television, you that are here may understand that what you're seeing on television, it's not prophecy. This is prophecy. This is prophecy. Isaiah wrote this through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit before I think he even understood it. But God told him to write it. Behold, he said, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Isaiah did not live to see this occur. Remember that? He did not live to see this happen. He wrote it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I wonder if he was thinking if it would ever happen. I wonder. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign he wrote. Behold in verse number 14, 
a virgin, not anybody else, not anybody, but a virgin shall conceive, this virgin shall conceive and bear a son, a son, and the son name shall be called what? Emmanuel. And you realize what Emmanuel means. God with us. So what Isaiah was writing here, that there is coming a day when God himself will manifest himself. God himself will take the form of a human being and come upon planet Earth. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? How do I explain that to you? I can't. My vocabulary is limited. I confess. My knowledge is limited. And so that is why I say what we are celebrating during this time is a miracle from God. It's God wonder and God miracle. Now, this is the prophecy. What is the definition of a prophecy? I want you to understand that. What is the definition? Because there are a lot of people out there now who are not pastor anymore. I mentioned this year, a couple of months ago, even on television, and people called me and they were laughing. And some of the guys on the television was laughing and said, that is so true, you know, we never think about it. Very rarely you see a man come down and he's a brother or a pastor. There is no, no such person anymore. They're all bishop and, and, and prophets and, and apostles and I don't know what else they're going to think about. But what is a prophecy? What is the definition of a prophecy? A prophecy definition, and when you study English language and you study the Bible, you realize that what you're looking at, this is no prophecy. That's a big joke. A man come to you and say, oh, I'm a prophet. Guess what? There will be a flooding. Why? That is not a prophecy. There will be flooding. Well, I, I know that. There's going to be shortages of food. What nonsense is that? There will be war. Why? That's no prophecy. What is, what is that? You come and tell me you're a prophet? Do you have to tell me anything yet? You have not said anything that I do not know. You see, the definition of a prophecy, beloved, is a future event. Something that will happen in the future that has never happened before. That is what the definition of a prophecy is. Something that will happen in the future that has never happened before. If it has happened before, it is not a prophecy. It is not the definition of a prophecy. You may think it is, but it is not. Now, if I go to a church, right, and this young man come here, since he's from, come, come, come here. He come now and he said, he said, church, I, I, I have a prophet's prophecy to, to, to make. And I said, okay, we have one here that will give a prophecy. Now, he comes up and he said, I, I also, pass again, come from inside. I also have a prophecy that I want to give to the church. So now I have two in this one service. Now here he comes now, he, he's sitting there and he says, yes, me too. I have, a, I have a prophecy that I want to give. So we have one, two, three prophecy. Now, this other guy now is sitting at the back and he's looking and he's saying, man, we have three black guys here giving prophecy. We need an Indian guy. So now we got another Indian prophet. Now how you come Indian prophet? Now here comes an Indian prophet. He now is an Indian prophet. So we have four prophets, and each one of them now have a prophecy. So I am the pastor of the church, and I'm going to allow them to give their prophecy. Now he gave a prophecy, and then the congregation started to scream and howl and, 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 and shout praises and all of that. Now he gave a prophecy. The congregation did the same thing. So you have four men here, each one giving a prophecy in the same in the same service. Now, as the pastor now, I have to I have to sanction all of the prophecy because I give them the occasion or the opportunity to share. So you come to the church and listen to all of these prophecy prophecy that is mentioned. So when you listen, you have to listen carefully. What is he saying? What kind of prophecy the guy gave? Before you started to shout hallelujah and fall on the floor and be ridiculous, listen to what he has to say. Does he really give a prophecy? A prophecy. Because a prophecy is a future event. Something that has never occurred again. Now I have the Bible here in my hand. This Bible I have in my hand. And I have read this Bible I do not know how many times. From Genesis to Revelation. 
So now I'm thinking as the pastor, I don't think this guy understands what is a prophet. Prophecy because what he said, what he just said is in the Bible. He comes now and he give another prophecy and what he just said is also in the Bible. I read that man, I know it is in the Bible. And what he said, it's also in the Bible. Earthquake, famines, this, sickness, all kind of stuff. Um, there will be diversity of illness and so Now he comes in, each one of these men, and listening to them, and I realize that each person here that give a prophecy in the service has given something that is already in the Word of God. So, should I accept it as a prophecy? No way, Jose. It's no prophecy. Your prophecy is no prophecy. So, Indian, you go. You have no prophet. You are not a prophet. Herod, you are not a prophet also. Go and take a seat and humble yourself. And you, you are no prophet. You go and take a seat. And neither are you a prophet. I know you're good looking, but you're not a prophet. Take a seat. <laughs> right. So, we have no prophet. Because what the prophets have given to us, what? What? Why are you shouting and screaming and falling down in the pew and, 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 and going and crying, hugging you up? He has not said anything that is not in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Now, if I take each one now and I accept their prophet, what am, their prophecy, what am I doing now? I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm doing something very, 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 very detrimental. Go with me to Revelation and see what I'm doing. I want you to see from the Word of God. So. Look in Revelation here, the last chapter in the book of Revelation. Are you there? Watch. Revelation chapter 22. God is closing out now. This is the last chapter in the book of Revelation. And here we have in the book of Revelation, in verse number 18, for I testify, look at that. Read it with me if you have it. Revelation, you can't miss the last book in the Bible. Verse number 18, read it with me. For I testify unto every man that hear the words of the prophecy of what? Of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Now, we get this. I want you to get this. This is not written by Gaetani. This is the word of God I'm reading here. Read it. You have a Bible? Read it. Revelation chapter 22. Let's read again. Verse number 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. What is God saying? Why did he write that? God wrote that to help you and I to understand that this is complete. This Bible is complete. It is the living word of God. This Bible, I don't have to wait for pages to be added to it. Now listen carefully. Every false religion has been added to this Bible. The Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church, they had a number of books. They have, I think they had 15 other books that they add also to this. Now here comes the Mormons. Look at every other false religion. The Mormon come to my home and they told me that they believe that the Bible is the Word of God. As a matter of fact, I saw it on their statement. I read their statement, the Mormon statement of belief. They would write number one on the number one thing they would write in the Mormon statement is that we believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And then number two, and we believe also that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. Now, if I should accept that, then I have to accept Islam. I have to accept the Quran. I have to accept the Gita. I have to accept everybody else. But if I'm a Christian born again and studying the Word of God, I have to declare to you that this is the living Word of God. There is no other Word of God. This is the Word of God. I live by it. I preach it. And I believe it. Now, if 
if you're a Christian today, you have to make that decision. Are you going to lift it up? Are you going to say, well, this is the Word of God. The Bible is complete. I have the Word of God complete. If I need something, I can find it in this book. If I need something, I can find it. Do you know, this Bible is proven over and over again in every generation to be the Word of God because every historical fact is a fact in the Word of God. Every biblical historical fact you can find happening in the world someplace. And in the prophecy and in the birth of Jesus Christ, you see it all come into place. And with all the other prophecy given, the prophecy that you see on television is a big fat joke. It is a big lie. And people unfortunately are not coming and seeing it. We had a guy that came to Suriname just this weekend, he's here this weekend. And last night you had a program of that. I don't really watch, but when you're flicking the channel, here he is. I said, let me see what this guy has. I look at this, he's, he's preaching on the podium. I said, Shelly, first of all, observe, there is no Bible. He had no Bible on, the, it was an empty glass pulpit. No Bible on the pulpit, first of all. So all he's talking about is himself. So this is what he did. I watched him for two or three minutes. He is saying to the people of Suriname, the song, the dancers in the church will give prophecies. The musician will give, give don't, don't laugh, don't get any idea there, view. You know, because he mentioned musicians. He said, and the musicians will give prophecy. I think if Gio should give a prophecy, we'll leave you in the hand of Rachel. Rachel will take care of you. <laughs> but, but this guy is mentioning all these people. He talked about the dancers, he talked about the singers, he talked about the musicians, then he talked about the people, everybody. And then he said, I, I, listen to what his word said, I am imparting unto you the power of prophecy. He don't have that authority. He don't have that authority to impart unto you anything. And I tell you what, people are crowding and they're laughing and they're, there were hundreds of people there. I think if the guy said fall, everybody would have fallen. If he said bow, everybody would have bow. If he said everybody dance, they would have danced. If he said jump, they would have jumped. And that is what you have happening on television. People are being carried away so easily. You watch many of the videos that Brother Robert is trying to bring to light. How many hundreds and thousands of people are being carried away so easily. May God help us here at the Calvary Baptist Church that you read it, man. Come on, please. Please read it and believe it. This Bible is, is complete. It's complete. And Paul wants you to understand that. And that is why I ask you to go with me into the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 and verse number 8. We read it last week. We can read it again because it doesn't hurt. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 and verse number 8. He said, love never fails. Love never fails. But whether they be prophecies, they shall what fail? Fail! That means, what does the word mean? Cease. Prophecy will come to an end. Cease. The word fail means to cease. Love never faileth. But whether they be prophecy, they shall cease. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. You see what I'm saying? So all of these people come and they say, I'm a prophet. Look at what the Bible said. First Corinthians chapter 14. Go to four, chapter number 14. And we're reading in verse number 37. This is what Paul said. If any man think himself to be a prophet. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are what? Are the commandments of the Lord. Note that verse very carefully. Paul said if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And what he said, love never faileth. But whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Remember the words of the living God. 
that we are being taught that our God is not a God of confusion, but He's a God of peace and He's a God of order. Now, what is happening, beloved? What is happening? You can see it for yourself. It's not what is being taught in the Bible. It's all about people that are lifting up themselves. It's all about pride. It's all about pride. And everybody wants a name for his or her self. Going around the world, unfortunately, and fooling people. I was in a church years ago in a place called Daytona in Florida. The church was packed up. There was about 600 or more people packed up because they had a guy who was a missionary. And he came and I said, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to preach Christ here. But he got up there and used that time to mention half of a verse and he talked about a one million. He explained how the people of Japan will treat a one million. Can you imagine that? Who cares? In a church service, do you want to hear here at Calvary Baptist Church how the people of Japan is going to eat a one million? No, 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 no. I don't think you came here for that this Sunday morning. You came here to hear a message from the Word of God. Now, you have a lot of people out there. A lot of people out there. And people are flocking them because they're coming to your country and they're coming to your area bringing a prophecy. Everybody is drawn to this thing. Bringing a prophecy. Bringing a message. Bringing a vision. Bringing this and bringing that. And that's all you see on television. And all these people have one, one agenda. I'm imparting this power onto you. I'm going to take you to another level. You're at this level, but I'm going to take you to another level. And I'm going to take you to another level. Listen, nobody can take you to another level. Only God has the power to do that. And may we understand that this Bible is the Word of God. And when you read it, you would understand that in the book of Colossians, it is said in the book of Colossians that there is only one man and one man only who should have preeminence in all the church. And that man's name is Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. His name is above every other name. His name is not below but above every other name. And when you come to a church or when you go to a church, may God help you to enter into the church where Christ is being exalted, where Christ is being preached, and where Christ has preeminence in everything. Because that is what Paul wrote in the Word of God. And Paul is explaining to all these people who think that they are spiritual. Who think that there is he, he or she is a prophet. But praise be unto God for the prophecies that are being fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ. We just read it that in the book of Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, he said, behold a virgin shall conceive. The virgin shall bring forth a son. And let's get this. And the son name shall be called Emmanuel. Go to me to Matthew chapter number 1. Matthew chapter number 1. Oh, beloved, see it unfold here. Matthew chapter number 1. You know, many people will not read it, this, all of this in Matthew chapter 21. They say, Pastor there's a lot of names and a lot of names. But listen, the Bible. Is a book of history. The Bible is a book of science. In every subject of history, the Bible is correct. All that you see, man may laugh at it. And God said, let there be man laugh at those things. They laugh at it at the creation of the world. They make joke of it. They have comedians now that are making joke in churches about these things. But may God help us that you and I hear 
may the Lord grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter number 21. Give us the genealogy of Christ. There are a lot of people now out there who wants to trace their what? Their family tree. They call it their family tree. So what do you do? You have to go to the archives and you have to look at your generation. If you're from Guyana and your four parents came from India, you can go to the archives. They have a record there. Shelly and I went and I was shocked that they were able to, to prove to us the name of the boat that brought our four parents from India to Guyana because my, my grandmother came from India on my, on, my, um, on my mother's side and my grandfather on my other side. So they can go back with the name, you give them the name, and they can go back and say, yes, look, this is the boat because the captain in those days of those, of those boats have to keep records. And fortunately, many of those records are still intact after hundreds of years because those men you use ink and a pen, and the ink and the pen try to preserve the paper, and now you have the archives. And they have in Suriname. Also, you can go to Suriname archives and check it. And you can know, oh wow, my grandfather came from the Lalaru. The Lalaru brought them here. That is why you have the Lalaru wet. You see that, that Lalaru here? That was the, the, the way the ship was, was formed that brought the, the, the grandparents uh, here from, from different parts of the world. So, this book, Genesis chapter 1, is giving us the genealogy where his, his bloodline, where he came from. And so we read all those preceding verses. And here we come now in Genesis chapter number 1. And we're reading here in verse number 16. And Jacob begot Joseph, we know that, the husband of Mary, whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Historical fact. You see that? Uh, for all the generations, look for 17 very carefully. For all the generations, now you can trace back the generations. For all and one generation, they will live it to 100 years. For all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until they carry away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ, are 40 generations. You see, we love all these names and genealogy factor that God has given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not for joke. People may, may not read it, but it's not for joke. But Bible scholars will go back and they will trace back the names and see, wow, 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 look at this. Look at this. And more and more is testifying to the fact that this Bible is the living word of God. It is the Word of God. And that is why I say the Bible is the Word of God. The other book I have no respect for. I may read it to get some knowledge about the religion and what they believe. But this is what I will lift up high, high, high. And proclaim on TV, on radio, and in churches that it is the living Word of God. Why? Because I can prove it. And so when a man comes to me and says, Oh, the Bible has so many controversies. And the Bible has so much mistakes. I said, show me, sir. Show me one. Give me one. Like the guy said, he said, I just came back from all my studies. And he was in, in Mecca. I don't know where he was. And he said, I came back. And, and we were taught 160. He gave me a half figure. I think he said 168. Where did he get it from? I do not know. He said, show me one. And that is what you can do, beloved. Because you, if you read the word of God, it brings so much joy to see that the prophecy is being fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ to such, to such that you could say it has been fulfilled to the crossing of a T, to a semicolon, or even to a comma, to a period. That, that exact it is. That exact it is. No, he said here. And then in verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused, engaged, or whatever, to Joseph, before they came together, read the lines, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. You know, Brother Robert emphasized the fact, and I emphasize the fact, you need to have a... If you study the other version of the Bible, and I did, you go to the international version, 
And many of the versions, they would say, and Mary was pregnant. <coughs> pregnant sounds very vulgar. Don't you think? She is pregnant. What does that say? Is that she had a sexual relationship. And now she's having a child. You see the word pregnant they use. They do not use this word. She was conceived by the Holy Ghost. The King James gave it to you pure and holy. Look at that. He said, before they came together, before they came together, she was formed with child of the Holy Ghost. Most of the other virgins, if not all, you can, you can check it for yourself, has taken this off. They do not want Mary to be conceived with a child of the Holy Ghost. But you have the King James Version. And when you read it, it said that she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, verse 19, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is what? Is of the Holy Ghost. Now you go to a Bible bookstore, prove it, go and check the other version of the Bible and look at these verses and you will realize they have knocked out that and they have implemented new words, new words and they are doing that in a lot of verses. <coughs> I don't have time to get into that. Let's get back here. So now in verse number 21, and she shall bring forth, and she shall bring forth, she's conceived in her womb by the Holy Ghost. The angel said to Joseph, and verse number 21, the angel said, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus means Savior. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He came for this purpose. The Son of Man has come to what? To seek and to save those that are lost. Prophecies being fulfilled. The words of Jesus Christ correspond right here to the words in the book of Matthew. He shall save his people from their sins. Verse number 22, look at that. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled. Look at that. Which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. Many of these guys come to Surinam. And many has come to Surinam. And what they have done? They leave all kind of prophecies. And they would say to us here in Surinam because they think we are stupid. We are unlearned. We are not educated. Because they are coming from Europe. They're coming from the United States of America. They're coming from Canada. They're coming from Australia. They're coming from England and New Zealand, all these big countries. And they come to this small country. And we, we got so, we are getting so excited. And they leave all kinds of prophecy. And they say, well, we are leaving now. And these prophecies will happen. After the service, I have a name for that. You can ask me what I call it. I have a name for them. I don't want to mention it on the pulpit, but Robert is doing a report. But I have a name for all of them. But this is what he said. He said, now all this, this is prophecy below. All this was done that it might be what? Fulfilled. Look at the word fulfilled, which was spoken of who? Of the Lord by the prophet. Uh, read the scripture and Moses never said, this is the word of Moses. Moses wrote and said, and thus saith the Lord. Read the scripture and you will realize what these men were saying. And thus saith the Lord. And thus saith the Lord. And thus saith the Lord. They were speaking God's word and penning the word of God. And they wrote about themselves and all their mistakes. They didn't hide anything. Because what they wrote was coming from the Lord himself. 
And Isaiah said, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Not Isaiah himself, but the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, the virgin shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. And here Matthew said, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, fulfilled, not some of these things that these people are giving on television, and never been fulfilled, and they walk away as kings, they walk away with all this pride, they walk away giving all these nonsense prophecies, and people are falling on their face, and exalting them, and lifting them up, and giving them all kinds of large gifts and money and all that kind of stuff. This is prophecy. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. Many of them will come and preach in our country and not even opening the word of God because they come with a message. They say, I come with a message. I've seen so many of them. And that is a popular thing now. Who wants to go in here man? I have a message and the message is from the word of the living God. Do you know that's not popular anymore? It's not popular anymore. You want to hear a message from the Bible, that's not popular anymore. Everybody wants to hear a vision. This man has a vision for us. He has a prophecy for us. He has a dream for us. And he has an interpretation for us. And that is where the crowd are flocking and drawing. But praise be unto God that the Bible still stands today, tomorrow, and even next year and years to come. You and I will pass away for the Word of God, the Bible said, will stand forever and ever. God's Word is settled in heaven. Thy Word, thy Word will stand forever. Praise be unto God for His Word. He said, Behold, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, fulfilled, which was spoken in the Bible how many times? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made by Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And the Word became, what? Flesh. How many times? We read it in the Bible in John 4. They came and they said, And we believe and we are sure that this man is indeed the Christ. He is the Christ. And this is what it said. The Savior of the world. That's what the Bible said. They testified to the fact that he is truly, when they heard him, the Christ, the Savior of the world. Read it in John 4. Then you come to John number 8 and what happened? Jesus said to them, because he was Emmanuel, God in flesh, he said to the Jews, he said, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews understood what he was saying. He was saying that, you look at me, I am God in human flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. The Jews couldn't understand that. Neither did they want to accept that. They took stones to stone him. Because they understand what he was saying. He was saying to them, I am the I am. You don't have to look at me. I am the I am. Because he said, before Abraham was I am, prove it to them. He said, he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. You talk about Abraham from the book of Genesis. Thousands of years ago. And now he's saying, before Abraham was I am, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and he was glad. They were shocked. They said, how can this man say this? He's not, remember he was just in his 30s. And they said, he's not, they didn't give him more age. You know that? They know they give him a little more years here in John 8. They said, you're not even yet 50 years. The man was just in his 30s. But they had 20 more years for him. You know, because they, it, the words confused them. And so they said, oh, let's give him 50. They said, man, you're not even yet 50 years old. But he was just 30. How can you make such a statement? See that? They were ashamed to say, probably, 
You know, you're just 30. <laughs> I often think about that. I think they were ashamed to say that. Man, you're just 30. They said, man, but you're not yet 50 years old. But you were talking about Abraham, who rejoiced to see your day. He saw it and he was glad. You are telling us, before Abraham was, I am. You are Jehovah, the creator God. He said to Philip, why do you ask to see the Father, Philip? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. John chapter 10 and verse number 30, he said, I and the Father are one. First John chapter 5, he said there are three that bear record in heaven. And the three are one. Read it, beloved. The Bible does not lie. God cannot lie. The prophecies of the Bible is being fulfilled. Fulfilled. And those prophecies He has fulfilled in every which way. Enjoy the Christmas season. Rejoice and be glad. Like the shepherds. Rejoice and be glad. That I am alive in 2015. You know, I do not know if I will live to see 2016 December. I don't know. Have you ever think about that? Have you ever think about that? Sometime in my private hour, I would say to Shelly, I said, Shelly, I wonder how long I will live. <laughs> and Shelly said, Well, you know, we all have to die. <laughs> and he said, Ma'am, I want to see some. I want to see a few more things, you know. I want to see all the children, you know, all the kids getting married, more grandchildren, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you don't have that issue. But listen to me, I have today. And if I live during this month, and you live during this month, rejoice. Rejoice. And Paul said, and again, I say, rejoice and be glad. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in the show. Glory to God in the heights, they said. They heard the multitude of the heavenly old singing praises. And I'm going to sing and praise and rejoice. And they said, the, the, the multitude of the heavenly hosts praise God by saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all mankind. Why? Because the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. Paul said in Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 4, when the fullness of time came, oh beloved, when God looked at his calendar, when it was the right time, God sent forth his son. The angel Gabriel flapped his wings and went to that virgin girl named Mary. And you know the rest of the story, you're going to hear much more than that. But listen carefully, this multitude of heavenly hosts, you know, maybe there were a couple of millions. Don't you think? I think each one of them must have said, I want to go to, I want to go to, here's an here is one opportunity for me. This multitude of heavenly hosts, the Bible said. And they praised God. And they said, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. But they get an opportunity to come down to earth now. You think about it? An opportunity is given to them that they want to come down to earth and they could sing praises at the birth of Jesus Christ. I believe the multitude of all of them probably said, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And Gabriel came, the angel of the Lord, and then a multitude of the heavenly hosts. No man could number them. A numberless multitude light up around that. The glory of God shone around, remember the story? And they were singing praises. Glory to God, they said, in the highest. And in our peace, and goodwill toward all mankind. And they said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior is born. Rejoice and be glad. So if the world has given to us this month, December, listen, there's a lot of paganism concerning all the different things of Christmas. But I have a way to block it out. I'm going to block out all the paganism and I'm going to use the time to praise God in my heart. Because listen to this carefully. I was sharing this last Wednesday to miss it. Listen to what happened. The shepherds went with that story. I'm going to share that story on television. STVS. National Television in Suriname. I'm going to share that story here and wherever I'm invited to share it. 
People may rejoice. Some may laugh at me. Get this. The shepherds return and individually they glorify God and praise God for the things that they had heard and the things that they had seen. That is what we need to do. Let the praise be an individual thing for you. That during this time, regardless of all that is happening around me, that praise is coming through me, from in me, and outside of me. The shepherds took the message of Christ. And many that heard it, they wondered. People will wonder again in 2050. They wonder. But these men return glorifying and pray. This praise is an individual matter. Collectively, we can do it here. But let it come individually. At your home, when you're driving, at your workplace, in a business meeting, wherever you may be, let the praises of God come natural to you. The prophecies of God is fulfilled and has been fulfilled. And praise be unto God. Whether or not the Pope may not want to mention it, we have something to look forward to. Not only celebrating his birth, guess what? Ah. Prophecy again. You see? Prophecy again. Not what you hear on television. Not what somebody comes from a foreign country and big up themselves. <laughs> you know? A lot of big up people all over the world, you know? They come big enough. Three piece suit and big tie and all kind of stuff. I know them. I've been around. But praise God! We serve them here! We are educated. God has given us knowledge too. So I don't care where you come from. I have my Bible too. And I'm waiting. Regardless of what you are saying, I know what the Bible said. The King is coming again. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Huh? You think I'm spanking and spanking about this up? Huh? How's that how you? You're spanking in the U.S. You, you're born in America or you're born in the U.S. <laughs> yeah? This one, look at it. The king is coming again. I have reason to rejoice. The trumpet can sound today. Maybe we don't get to see or we don't get to have our Christmas party because the Bible tells us the trumpet will sound. It can happen any moment, any time. And look what's happening. Look what's happening. You get it? You get it, Ruben? The dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us that are believers, that are alive, shall be caught together with them in the clouds. And the Bible said, two will be in the same bed. You got it, son. He got it. One will go and one will end. So you better talk to that girlfriend. Two will be working together. One more. One more. Think of that. Two working together. One gone, one left. Two in the same bed. Two in the same bed. Two working together. Can you imagine the trumpet song? Yeah. And BAM! You're sitting there. And all of a sudden, you see your mother gone. Am I done? You're trying to grab on, but mine is rising and you're still sitting. <laughs> See that? Are you wondering why? And 
That is why, you know, take those tracks. Pass it on. When you go to this family dinner this week, when you go to different places this week, during this time, many opportunities will be open to you, to your neighbors, your loved one, your dad, your mom, your aunt, your uncle. When you send that card around the world, slip in a track in the card and send it also. You never know. You never know. Do your part. Do your part. The prophecies are being fulfilled. Praise be unto God. The Bible. The Bible. You can live it in your home and anywhere. Testify to this. It is the word of the living God. Why? Prophecies. Not these nonsense prophecies on radio and television. You know? You got to hear I want to like, I, I, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous that it's beyond that this man will think that I am that stupid. Huh? I am that Am I that stupid to believe what nonsense you are telling me? Unfortunately, you know, it's happening all over the world. May not happen to you and I. May we understand the word of God and stand firm and strong upon the living word of God. I want you to come to the altar and praise God. This is a time to praise. You know, we always come and ask God for all kinds of stuff. But this Sunday morning, let us come and say thank you, Lord.